You know, when God gives you a promise, you've got a responsibility of preparing for it. I believe the Holy Bible is the perfect word of God. I am what it says I am. God can change you from within. The identity you have in Christ gets released. When Christ comes in you, the genetics of the blood of Jesus begins to function. This is where the power of God takes over. I will never again be the same. In Jesus' name, Amen. Don't make money to be happy. There is no shop selling happiness. Don't buy a car to be happy. Sometimes you will lose joy with that. To be happy, be connected to Christ and learn to live a life of giving. It is better to give than to receive. Everybody has needs. Don't live your life from the point of need. Live your life from the point of joy in the Holy Spirit. You know, there is a way of coming to dance before God. Be not grieved and depressed for the joy of the Lord is your strength and stronghold. God is our strength. The place of our security is our joy in Christ Jesus. Don't write your need on your face and live with that. Write your joy on your face and live with that. Let's learn to rejoice in Jesus. Somebody open your mouth and shout out his name. Church, shall we rise up to our feet? Thank you, God. How are we doing this morning? Everybody okay? Yes? Hallelujah. Let's le read a scripture. It is Romans 8, 14 to 17. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, their heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Hallelujah. This morning, we call out Abba Father. There's nobody like him. Shall we look up to God in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful morning, Lord. We thank you. We come before your awesome throne this morning, bringing thanks and bringing glory to your name. And Lord, Master, we pray that even as we stand here, O oh God, Lord, we pray that you will come and minister unto us. We pray that you will open our hearts today to receive you. We pray that you will pour out your fresh anointing upon us, Lord. This morning, O oh God, Lord, pour out your fresh anointing, Lord. We come before you, O oh God, Lord, Master. There's nobody like you, God. 
We thank you for who you are, Lord. We surrender the rest of the time of worship and word into your awesome hands. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. chosen generation. Amen. We're going to lift up the God of heaven and the earth this morning. Hallelujah. We're going to continue to worship.
the Lord. The Bible calls Jesus Lion of Judah. Amen. The same Bible calls you and I co heirs with Christ. So, who are we? Who are we? Lions. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm a lion. I'm a lion. Oh, come on. Don't chicken out. Don't tell it titled like a mouse. Come on, tell them, I am a lion. I am a lion. Boldly, I'm a, lion. I am a lion. The lion of Judah lives within me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The lion, the lion does not fear how big the animal is in front of him. He only looks at his next meal. Hallelujah. You and I are overcomers in Christ. Yeah, we're going to overcome every fear, every anxiety, every depression, every bondage in Jesus name. Hallelujah. No matter what our situation is this morning, every valley is rising up. Every mountain comes down in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you ready to roar this morning? Are you ready to roar? Hallelujah.
prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way, prepare the way of the Lord. Oh God, he, he raised up all mountains, he made low. with us the one who looks at us the one who cares for us he calls us children he calls us sons and daughters even before we were formed in our mother's womb he knew us he called us by name we are not alone we are not left alone to fear he embraces us. He holds us in his hands. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me. Deliverance from my 
Yeah.
are the children of God. Hallelujah. We thank you for choosing us to be your children. So stiff-necked, so undeserved we stood, but Lord, your mercy and your grace has called us by name. We thank you, God. We thank you. We surrender the rest of the service into your awesome hands. Come and take control of the time, Lord. In Jesus' most precious and holy name we pray. Amen, amen, hallelujah. Please put your hands together for Pastor Jesus. Amen. I am a child of God. Hallelujah. Let's do the confessions together. I believe in the Almighty God, our Father and Creator. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin. He suffered, died, and rose again. He ascended into heaven. I believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who is worshipped and my guide. I believe in holy fellowship, faithful giving, and service to God in this church. I believe the Holy Bible is the perfect word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. Today, as I learn the word of God, here in my spiritual family, I am blessed, healed, and anointed for a holy and victorious living. I will never again be the same. In Jesus' name, Amen. The Lord bless us. Please be seated. It's such a joy, you know, to be back in the house of God together, worshiping the Lord and to thank him for his goodness and mercy. Amen. Last night when I saw all the clouds up in the sky, I said to myself, Lord, what's going to happen? Sunday, is it going to rain? And I said a prayer before going to sleep. But this morning when I woke up with the bright light <laughs> of the sunlight, I was thinking, Father, like this, just shine your presence on the church this morning, you know, in a mighty way. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we want to continue to study about the fact that God wants us to be overcomers. God doesn't want you to be a failure. God wants you to be an overcomer. Sometimes the devil brings into our mind a thought. Sometimes religion brings a thought into our mind that God is allowing failure. God is allowing defeat so that he can teach us to be humble, so that he can teach us to be pure and clean. Well, I want to say this. God's primary method of teaching us anything is not suffering. It is the word of the living God. God teaches us by his Holy Spirit. He teaches us by his word. Yes, God can use sufferings to teach us. God can use difficult moments in our life to teach us. But God's primary method of teaching us, God's primary source of teaching us is by the word of God through the Holy Spirit. And we must understand that God can use us and work through us and bless us even through becoming overcomers. When you look at people in the Holy Bible, many of them were unworthy or most of them were unworthy of their blessings. But because they walked with God, God began to bless their lives and change their lives. Did they not face problems? In fact, they faced problems to such an extent they would wonder if God really called them. Some would wonder if God really existed. In fact, the first time God called Abraham and asked him to come out of his land, come out of his father's house, it appears that for about 25 years, Abraham had to wait and God wouldn't speak to him even once in a while. Think about it. It's not like God spoke to him every day. He had to really believe in what he heard from God and keep moving forward. But he understood one thing. God has called him to be an overcomer. You cannot allow the devil to make you think that you are chosen to fail. No, you are chosen to succeed in the name of Jesus. You are chosen to be victorious. You are chosen to flourish by the grace of God. You are chosen to blossom for the glory of God. The fact is, we all will go through ups and downs, but God wants us to be more than overcomers through Christ in whom we are loved by God Almighty. 
Last Sunday, we looked at how Nehemiah was one guy who stood up to build for God with a passion in his heart because the Babylonians had come and burned down the walls of Jerusalem, stripped down the entire temple. In fact, there were portions of the temple that the Babylonians and the invaders had come and not just broken down the place of worship, but they even removed certain foundations of the temple. Now that's so bad and they turned it into a trash can. They turned it into a place of garbage. It was so difficult about 400 years before the Lord Jesus could come. You see that Ezra and Nehemiah, you will find those books in the Bible. They were scribes and leaders in different lands of captivity, but they came together and season after season, God sent prophets to help them. One of them was the prophet Zechariah. Another was a prophet called Haggai. Jeremiah had already prophesied this was going to happen. And when it happened, Daniel was in a season of waiting before God as God raised him. All of these things happen in that 100, 150 years of a timeline. And you will find Zechariah you know, prophesying to one guy called Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was one man that God had chosen to work with Ezra and Nehemiah. And you will find that Zerubbabel was faced with a daunting task. While Nehemiah fought the battle on a certain level, here is this man called Zerubbabel fighting his own battles. I have seen this happen so many times. When we as a church go through challenges, we go through pressing times. And as a corporate body, as one family in Christ, we face the struggles together. I have seen that people in the church individually face their own different problems. They face their own different challenges. But one thing that I'm so thankful to God about constantly is this, that when God gives victory to the church, it's not just the corporate church that sees the victory. Individuals begin to see victory in their personal lives by the success that God gives. Oh, go ahead, give God a big hand clap. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The other day, somebody was telling me, they said, other day means a few years ago, all right? So somebody was telling me, Pastor, I've been coming to this church from a few years, but my life, you know, is not blessed. My life is destroyed. My life is going down and down. And they kept talking for a few minutes. And I asked them, are you connected to any other prophets or pastors? Because sometimes you can have, you know, a good thing happening in one direction and you can be connected to wrong people people that probably God has not put in your life and they can be putting negativity into your life. At one point they said yes but now we've cut off everything because now we believe God has planted us here and we study God's word from what you teach and we're believing God. I told that person, I told that family, said what is your real problem? They said real problem is we see the church growing, we see things happening in the church but in our personal life it's not happening. I told them this one simple thing. It's impossible if you are connected to the anointing of the church. If your heart and soul is connected to where God planted you to worship. It's impossible that when God blesses the church that your life is not blessed. That's not possible. They said, really? I took them to the scripture where the Bible says about how when God anoints, it flows down the whole body. <coughs> they began to believe God. They said, Pastor, we're trusting God for this. It's been a few years. <coughs> and I began to see God's blessing on their life change them. The other day, they happened to come for a Thanksgiving prayer. And I said, do you remember a few years ago, you were angry and you were irritated and you were really, really upset? She said, yes. He said, yes, pastor, we remember. But you know, once we understood the plan of God, we realized God's not destroying our lives and just building the church, but God is building the church and our lives. We're the same team. I understood that. They said, once we got that, we began to change the way we think. We 
put away the traditional Christian thinking. We began to believe the word of God and God is changing our life. God is changing our situation and we see unusual favor. This morning, please understand, when your hands are connected to the plan of God, you may be the Zerubbabel who is facing tremendous personal struggles in the work that you're doing. But Zechariah the prophet says this. Let's read Zechariah and chapter 4 verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me saying, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel saying, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Who art thou? Come on, let's read it. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting. Somebody says shoutings. Oh, it's improper. Somebody shout shoutings. Shouting. Crying grace, grace unto it. Zerubbabel was faced with this tremendous tragic situation. The foundations were pulled out and this whole situation was like a great mountain. You know when I read that scripture, I went to the geography of Israel and I was searching for the mountain. Which mountain became flat? And I began to study the Bible. Which mountain became flat? And I was surprised to find the bigger truth in it. What God told this fellow, see, there is a reason to why they need a flat. Because the other day I was in uh, somewhere in Northeast, I'd gone to preach and uh, four hours we were delayed. Flight. I was waiting, waiting, waiting. Then I walked, I lost my patience. I walked up to that, whoever was in the airport, that officials and I, I said, I'm not here to bother you, but I want to ask you a question. What is the problem with the plane? Why it's not coming? They said, sir, wait a minute, I'll talk to the manager. I said, you give me a good answer, I'll buy you a coffee, but I want to know what is happening. They said, okay, I'll tell you one thing, when problem happens, no, don't get upset with the leaders. Talk to them nicely, comfort them. They will tell you everything. <laughs> I've had many experiences. Once I was uh, coming from Northeast again, in Calcutta, my flight got cancelled. Sunday I have to preach. That is Saturday night. It's the last flight of that particular company. And it got uh, cancelled. That's my, what is that? Connecting flight. I have to preach next day morning. Late night I'm stuck in Calcutta. I'm praying and I saw people were scolding that fellow. Scolding him badly. And fighting. Some were coming to hit him. Very, Calcutta people are very active. They are good people. Our independence movement started in Calcutta, no? One of the movements started in Calcutta. They are very good people. That man was sweating. And he was angry, his face was red. So when the shouting was going on, I walked up to that man and I said, listen, I'm also a passenger, here's my boarding pass. I missed the same flight. I want to ask you something. I can see the struggle you're going. Is there something I can do for you? No, sir. I said, thanks for the way you're handling it, really. Really appreciate the way you're handling the tension. I said, thanks. And people are shouting. Fight is going on. A few minutes later, I again went. I said, uh, can I talk to you for a minute? Yes, sir. I said, see, I'm a priest of a church. Tomorrow I have to be in the church. I know there's nothing you can do, but I just want to ask you, by chance, is there something you can do? I'd really appreciate it, but I feel bad I'm asking you. You, you already have enough tension, but... He said, sir, you wait. <laughs> <laughs> About 10, 15 minutes, this fight was going on. He called somebody on the wireless. He said, make sure this man is taken care of. They, they inter-company, there is some booking. They booked me on another company flight. And I came to Bangalore by midnight or early morning, whatever. Sometimes when we talk politely, it works. Am I helping anybody? 
It works with husband and wife also. <laughs> it helps with children also. <laughs> so I asked this in somewhere in Northeast. I think it was an ice wall. I asked this airport staff, why the plane is not landing? I mean, is it on the way? What's it? Then they said, sir, the actual problem is this is a complete mountain terrain. This is one of the most difficult airports in India. Only recently commercial flights have started. The problem is for the plane to land, it needs a certain length of runway, it needs a certain infrastructure, and here it is very poor. And right now the visibility is very poor because of this mountain stretch, you know, unless they get clear visibility with clouds moving away, only then they can land. And they will not take off from the other city to come here until from here they certify vision is clear. I said, thanks. Then I knew what my target was. Clouds, in Jesus' name, move. Pa, I prayed that airport on fire. In a positive sense. <laughs> prayed, prayed, clouds moved, flight landed. You know, for many activities, when builders come to build, they look for a level land. They will send JCB machines, bulldozers, and they will level the land. So I thought God was speaking to Zerubbabel saying, God will send angels and level the land. So I was looking for a mountain that went flat. The more I studied the Bible, I understood no mountain went flat. It was the cumulative, pro the total collection of problems in the language of the prophet. God said, it looks like a great mountain. Those problems collectively look like a great mountain. And God is saying, it will become a plain before Zerubbabel. It will become a level ground before Zerubbabel. Now we should understand what God's word is saying. God is not saying that this whole problems will vanish. He's not saying this whole problems will reduce. He's saying when Zerubbabel comes to build, he will become so big. My grace in him will change him to become so large. This big mountain will look like one flat land. Problem will be there, but you will grow disproportionate you will grow much stronger because it's not by might it's not by power it's by my spirit said the lord <laughs> hallelujah oh i love that verse so god was saying you know when i used to read that scripture i used to think no need of might there are times i would say every might disappear so spirit can come but the more I studied the scripture, you know, we must understand, when you study poetry, you must understand poetic language because it, it violates grammar. But it's not wrong because it's poetic language. You, to understand Bible, you must study Bible language. When God was saying it's not by might, he was not saying your might is not required. When he said it's not by power, he was not saying your power is not required. Confidence in God doesn't mean no self-confidence. That's not what it means. Confidence in God does not mean you don't need self-confidence. No. It means to the proportion of your might, to the proportion of your power, the Spirit's proportion will be much higher. It will be much greater. It will be much more powerful that it will feel it's not by your might. It was surely not by your power, but it was by the Spirit of God who worked in such a large way that your little might and your little power was nothing compared to the great power that God poured into your life so that that mountain looked like a small plane. Hallelujah. That is the concept of what God is saying. He's saying that mountain is going to move away in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. A few weeks ago, uh, this, this situation happened where they said, we are done, we are going to the court, it's over. But thankfully they came to the church to pray. So I told them, good, you've come to pray. 
you're not going to the court, you're going to have a beautiful family life, we're going to pray. I introduced them to Christ our Lord and I asked them, why don't you receive Christ in your life? And they were willing to. They receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. We prayed together. <laughs> a few days ago they said, actually we don't understand why we were fighting. We don't understand what our problems was. I mean, we can see the problem, but it's nothing. We just don't, <coughs> problem was still there. His mother, her mother, all was there. Nobody died. <laughs> he was still giving his colleagues drop to the house. She was still getting picked up by the same friends. Nothing changed. Except in them, God began to change things. And as a family, they felt their problems are nothing in a few weeks. Why? Because they no longer were limited to their strength. They were no longer limited to their power. They had welcomed the presence of a greater power, the Holy Spirit of God Almighty. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And God is saying there, you know, sometimes you will climb some mountains, but sometimes you will move some mountains. It takes the Holy Spirit in your life to discern and understand which one to climb and which one to move. The problem with many of us is sometimes we have so much faith, but we're not led by the Spirit. We are not committed to overcoming by the Holy Spirit. And so instead of moving the mountain, some, sometimes we are so full of faith, we don't listen to the Holy Spirit. So instead of moving the mountain, we climb the mountain. Or instead of climbing the mountain, we keep commanding, move the mountain. God may have kept the mountain there for you to climb. Ask Holy Spirit, what is your plan? Let him tell you. Otherwise, you will keep moving mountains that God didn't mean for you to move, but to climb. And some mountains are not to climb, but they are to move in the name of Jesus. And if you don't seek the Holy Spirit with all your muscles of faith, you're going to be climbing mountains when God said you should have moved it, man. It's important to discern the move of the Holy Spirit. Overcome by the Holy Spirit. And God is saying something very interesting there. You will finish this work that you started by shouting. You remember I asked all of you, shout together? Because it's there in the Bible, shout. Why to shout? Because our own thoughts will keep saying, it won't happen. It won't happen. It won't happen. Your strength is not enough. Your might is not enough. Your knowledge is not enough. And everything in you will say, yeah, that is true. This is true. The other thing is true. Don't know how. Don't know when. Don't know why. Don't know what. Don't know anything. Like that. Our mind will keep talking to us. And that's why sometimes you need to shout grace. Grace. Grace means by the spirit of God. By the empowering power of God. By the anointing spirit of God. You need to shout it. Why? Drown your inner voices with the covenant of God's word. Drown your inner fears with the covenant of God's grace. Don't shout the voice of the enemy. Shout the voice of God Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, go ahead. Give God a mighty hand. Somebody shout grace. Speak out God's grace over the negative thoughts, over the anxieties, over the evil, over the things that the devil has fashioned against you. Speak out the grace of God. Hallelujah. Wow. He says, but shoutings of grace, you will keep the capstone. What is capstone? This is not the cornerstone. This is the finishing stone. These people had stone for everything. So God is speaking stone language. This is on stone community. Anything they'll take stone. David also took a stone. So God said, okay, you are, you are stone community. I'll anoint your stone. That's why when God gave 10 commandments, he gave them on stone. Because these are stone people. When Moses got angry, he threw the stone and broke everything. <laughs> they are stone people. See, God will anoint what is in your hand. So hold good things in your hand. 
Because finally that will get anointed. Hmm. God bless you. <laughs> no, this is true. This is a fact. <laughs> the Bible says, <laughs> you will keep the capstone. Because many times, you know, when we start a work, I, I love that. When you, <clears throat> when you read the passage, it says, number one, you will finish what you started. And secondly, don't despise the prophet Zechariah is telling Zerubbabel, don't you despise the day you laid the foundation. Don't you despise that day as a small day. In fact, Zerubbabel in his diary did not even mention in the personal journal that today we put the foundation day. He didn't even feel it was important. So Zechariah the prophet is saying, fellow, you thought that day was a small day. You thought that day was a meaningless day because you thought you can't finish what you started because you thought it's an insignificant day. That small prayer, that small faith, that small offering, that small worship, that small commitment, you thought it's insignificant. But God says on that foundation, I'm going to make sure with shoutings of grace, you're going to put the capstone. You're going to put the finishing stone. You're going to put the total work. Hallelujah. You're going to do a turnkey job until it is completed. It is done. Some of you, you thought you won't finish it this morning. God is saying, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. You will finish it. You will see it happening on that simple foundation that you laid. God is going to build the rest. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes I feel God's called me. My anointing is Moses' anointing. In a particular context. Don't stone me. That's not my anointing. In a context, Moses' anointing was when all were crying by the Red Sea, God told Moses, tell my people to go forward. Sometimes I feel that's the call of God on my life. Last week I went to pray for a friend for 30 years ago, 40, 30 years ago, we used to sit together and pray in the nights. So one friend of mine came from another city, he's a pastor, and he said, the other friend of ours, who used to pray with us every night, 10 o'clock, we sit and pray together till 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, for a long time. Then he fought with me and he went off. Sometimes all that happens, then we became friends again. So we went to the hospital because he's very sick. I didn't know. When my friend told me, he came to know. He said, I've come to Bangalore. Can we go meet your, our old friend? He's sick in the hospital. So we went to the hospital to pray with him. But he's very older to me. Both these guys are older to me. So when we went to the hospital, this fellow was so happy. This friend of mine, old friend of mine, was so happy. You, after so many years, I said, yeah. I'm not a selfie guy, but I took a selfie. <laughs> because I want it in my digital diary. My old friend, doctor said it's hopeless. He can't even talk, they've done something and all to the throat. But with great difficulty, he said, I'm ready to die. I'm going to die. Don't pray for me to live. My course is done, I'm going. My friend, he got angry. He doesn't pastor English church, so he doesn't have diplomacy. <laughs> I had to learn all this polished way of saying, you may go to hell, but God can change your condition. You know, we, we learn to put it softly. This friend of mine got angry. He said, hey, I'll remove these tubes and hit you now. <laughs> that is real Pentecostal anointing. <laughs> I grew up in that. Deep inside, I'm still that. <laughs> Sometimes I feel some fellows, the way they are sitting. But, but. So this fellow is saying, no, no, you pray that I'll die. So my friend said, you preach, no, that Jesus heals. When you prayed, didn't people get healed? Yeah. On that bed, he's saying, yeah, yeah. So then why don't we pray for your healing? He says, okay. My friend got very angry. He said, you pray. I'm in no mood to pray. This fellow needs one. I can't pray. You pray. 
And I said, no, you came from another city, you pray. He says, you better pray. <laughs> then I understood. He can't eat that fellow, he'll eat me. <laughs> we prayed together. Hallelujah. It was such a beautiful time to pray with my friends. That as When I was a child, I sat with these guys and we used to pray every night. They were older, of course. They were working. I was in my school days. <laughs> Sometimes we go through situations and we look at some things and we say it's in insignificant. It happens to even very anointed people. In some situation we say now it won't improve. Now it can't get better. Oh, now it's over. No, don't make up your mind until you heard from God. Don't look at your situation and decide. God didn't call you to be a horoscope soothsayer. God didn't call you to be a weatherman. God called you to be an Elijah to change the weather according to the plan of God. Oh, I preach good, man. Come on. That was nice. Okay. God wants us to overcome limitations in life. Sometimes we go through limitations. Apostle Paul went through tremendous limitations. First of all, when God touched him, some people need strong touch. That strong touch was so strong, he became, it's assumed that he became partially blind. And he was physically weak. And he used to preach and minister. But he got beaten terribly beaten badly every now and then. If you read the life story of Apostle Paul, he got beaten so badly so many times, it's a miracle that he didn't die many times. Because many times they uh, threw stones at him, thought he is dead and they went. After they were sure he's dead. When they left, he got up and he went to next town and he started preaching. Hmm, like that. This kind of a man, let's see what he's written. Philippians chapter 4, let's read verse 11 onwards. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing both plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do. See, we all know that verse 13, but can we read the context of it, verse 11 and 12, one more time? Not that I am speaking of being in need, for I have learned in whatever situation I am to be. That's the first commitment we have to make. Lord, whatever situation I am in, I will be content in you. I will be happy in you. Not that I won't desire a change. Not that I won't desire success. But even in this, I'm going to thank you because you have a plan. Secondly, I know how to be brought low and I know how to... Some people know how to handle failure, but they don't know how to handle success. Some others know how well to behave in success, but they just can't handle failure. Apostle Paul says, I've learned both. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and how I can do through the Holy Spirit, through Christ's Spirit, through the grace of God that strengthens me. This morning when we read that verse, I can do all things through Christ. It is talking about the fact that my external situations cannot control the inner person of who I am. Hallelujah. My external situations cannot control the internal person of who I am. Externally things may change, but internally I will be a happy person. I will be strong in the Lord and I'm going to be moving forward because internally I'm an overcomer in the mighty name of Jesus. Sometimes up, sometimes down. But it's the Holy Spirit that instructs me. I'm learning from the Holy Spirit in both classroom and out of the classroom. I believe God can work in me even through my bad times. God is working in me not only in the good times. But God is working in me 
even in the bad times. Therefore, I can do all things. What is he meaning? What Apostle Paul is saying is, I'm an overcomer. I'm productive. I'm meaningful. I'm fruitful in all situations. My functionality doesn't go down. My productivity is not weakened. Hallelujah. In every situation, I don't forget my responsibilities. I don't forget my character. I don't forget my integrity. In all situations, I can do what God wants me to do. I can continue to be who God wants me to be because his grace is on my life and internally, I don't go down. This is so very important. We must understand this principle of being led by the Holy Spirit. One of my friends, Nandakumar, always sits on my right. I don't know where he is today. He's somewhere here. One of the services, he, his wife, you know, they've got three siblings. There are four people in the house, four children. Fantastic family. We grew up together. And uh, his mother, I won't take her name, but um, they were coming to Bangalore with their dad and mom, four small children, on this Bellary Airport Road, Bellary Road, Airport Road, before they reached Yalahanka. Early in the morning, there was an accident some 40 years ago. And in that accident, their father died. And in the midnight, the highway robbers came and stole all their belongings. They were shifting their house from another city on a government job. So everything was in the vehicle, completely stolen. With including the jewels they were wearing was stolen, you know, because they were all unconscious. Then when they woke up and started recovering, they don't know where they are. Each child, each person in the house was in a different hospital. They couldn't attend their own father's funeral. It was a very sad story. Finally, the, they found each other through the help of the police and government agencies. And the government was kind enough to give uh, a job to the mother in the place where the father died. And she began to work. And in the process of recovery, they heard about Jesus. And they decided to welcome Christ in their life. Suddenly, things began to change in their life. Two stories that came to my mind from their life. One is, they all wanted to end their life. They thought it's over. But when Christ came into their life, they began to feel hopeful. They said, hey, God Almighty will take care of us. So they started coming to church. They became very active and uh, uh, very, very passionate for God. Fantastic times. One of those days, uh, one of the pastors started a church near Yalahanka and uh, invited this family. Why do you have to go all the way to Atinaga? Those days, our church was Ganganaga, Atinaga. Why do you have to travel so far? You can come close. She said, okay. And so she went to that church. That night, <laughs> and now these are people who are not born in Christian families. They're born in non-Christian homes. So they're very simple in their faith, very direct in their approach to God. In the night, an angel of God appeared to her and said, your attendance register is kept in that church. Next Sunday, when God's angels are marking your attendance, go there and give attendance. What happened is, in our church, pastors decided not to tell them, come to our church, because it's so far. And also because we don't want this new family in Christ to feel that there is some problem between churches, you know. They shouldn't think that there's some kind of negative competition. So the pastor said, it's okay, you go to a church nearby and left it at that. God's angel appears in the night to her and says, you and your children's attendance, register is in that church. That's where I have appointed for you to go. Go. You know, sometimes God has got unique ways of working. And this family came back to church next Sunday. I remember she telling my father, why didn't you tell me God called me to this church? My dad said, I don't know. <laughs> she said, God's angel came and spoke to me and said, she didn't know it was angel. She, she just didn't understand. She said, a person like this appeared to me. And then we understood it was an angel of God and said, appeared to me and said like this. So hereafter, don't send me to any other church. I will come only to this church. My dad said, you're welcome. Then problem was solved. After a few weeks or months, she was so sick. And they thought it's over. 
No one to help them. And she made a prayer. She said, God, keep me alive till my children come from school. Because when they come, there's no one to open the door. Please. There's no food in the house. There's no one to help. Very difficult days. No father working hard to somehow as a single parent to build the family. Four, you know, growing children. No one to help me, God. As she was crying, saying, God, just keep me alive till my children come home. I just want to make sure I open the door for them because I'm paralyzed. I'm not able to get up. All of a sudden, that same angel came into the room and said, you think you're alone, but I am with you. And you will be well. By the time the children came home and she opened, I'm sorry, I get emotional when I say this. By the time she opened the door when the children came in, they didn't enter the house. If I remember the story right, they ran. Children saw their mother and ran. They came from school, saw the mother and ran, ran out of the house. Went and called one guy. He's a pastor today. I won't take his name. Went and he was a member in our church that time in Yalanka. Went to that man's house and said, uncle, something happened to mom. Come. That man came. He and his wife came. They were staying in a place called Betalsur. They came and they saw. They were shocked. Because that lady's face was glowing like a light bulb. They said, don't worry, this is not bad. Made the children go inside the house. That man came straight to my house. <laughs> and said, pastor, tonight you have to come and see. You should see what happened to this lady. <laughs> so my dad went. <laughs> Her face that night was still bright. Physically bright. People in the village were coming and looking at her face. And then we heard the story. The story is an angel of God had visited her. You know, sometimes God will strengthen you. In, that's why for me, no, sometimes I don't like this English formality of traditional churches. My Jesus is more than a book Jesus. He's a real Jesus. I... In the words of John the Apostle, this Jesus whom we have seen with our eyes, our hands have handled the word of life, whom we have heard. I have seen God at work in the lives of different people. Her son still comes to our church with the family. Our God can strengthen you. I'm not saying that angel will come to every house. Don't keep praying for that angel and don't start idol worship. Pray to Jesus. He knows whether to send an angel or just send you the word every week. Through one brown skin. Just receive God's word in your life. Our God is a real God. He's a living God. He says, my grace is sufficient for you. Overcome by the spirit. Go ahead. Take a minute to clap your hands. Open your mouth. Just praise God for a few minutes. Hallelujah. Sometimes we have to overcome battles in our life. <laughs> this is the story of David. David, three stories today. This is the third one. David, it's a classic chap. We all love David. In real life, I don't know if we like him, but the Bible character is so beautiful. And the mythology is wonderful. We've painted David as a fantastic guy. But Uriah might have a different opinion. Goliath will surely have a different opinion. <laughs> it all depends on perspective. David, the sweet psalmist of Israel, the guy who really loved God. For me, the point is this. He's our party. Because God loved him, he loved God. That is our party. So it does everything else doesn't matter. Hmm. Bible says, David... When he was anointed, let's read it from the Bible, 2 Samuel chapter 5. And when David inquired of the Lord, God said to him, Thou shalt not go up, but fetch a compass behind them and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And let it be when thou hearest the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt bestir thyself, for then shall the Lord go out before you to smite the host of the Philistines. What happened when David was anointed as the king of Judah and later 
I think about seven years later or six years later, the whole of Israel came, all the 11 tribes, and said, you be our king too. So David became the king of all Israel. That time Philistines heard. You know, sometimes devil, no, don't attack you when you have nothing. When something good happens, only devil wants to attack. You know, some people have nothing because devil already attacked. But when you get something, that's when the devil starts attacking. And what the Philistines did, <laughs> if you want to understand present day Middle Eastern history, read book of Samuel. It's the same story, repeated in different styles. Philistines, when they heard David as king, they all gathered together and arranged themselves in the valley, one funny name is there. They all arranged themselves there, in that valley. Now David has a choice. Should I go for battle or no? If you have a choice, you should always seek God. Even otherwise, you should seek God. But if you have a choice, you should seek God. Should I go for fight or no? Just because someone is inviting you to punch, don't go punch them. Ask God, should I punch? If God says go, your fist is not punching. When you punch, his fist will punch. Oh, your impact will be very powerful. So ask God, should I go? Especially with your in-laws. Seek the Lord <laughs> with all your heart. Usually God will say, don't go. And the Bible says, <clears throat> I actually didn't mean marriage in-laws. I was actually meaning to say the political in-laws. <clears throat> but we we'll leave that. The Bible says, David, when he asked God, God said to him, go, and you're going to win. So David called Israel and said, we're going to the battle. We're taking the invitation. Let's fight it out. So the Philist, in today's language, it's called, you know, military exercise. You know, China doing military exercise around Taiwan. Same thing, Philistines around Israel. So he responded. And God gave them fashionable victory. Victory like whole scale, total victory. Philistines, they left their idols and images and ran. Why did they bring idols and images? Because Philistines know with each idol, with each image, there is a spirit that helps them. Don't forget that side dishes are very important. Because they understand that with each idol, with each image, there is a spirit that helps them. But they didn't have time to carry these. And they left it and ran from the onslaught that David was bringing. When David finally got there and these fellows ran away, he found all those things. He burned everything. He burned everything. I'm answering some of your deep inner questions for those who don't know what to do with some things. <coughs> and then the Bible says, when they finished... They went back to Israel. When they went back to Israel, in Israel, they are happy because they got victory. Heavy popularity, all newspapers, you know, this man's uh, productivity, Gallup poll is very high, all are praising David. Suddenly, Philistines have come back again. This time, they have double rebound. You know what I'm saying? Doubled up their resources, their full power, they have come. David did not say, last time God said, yes, no, this time we'll go da. No, he waited before God. Don't fight just in your experience. Overcome by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. He waited before God. God, should I go up? And this time God gave a different answer. God said, wait, don't go now. Change your method and change the timing. Sometimes God will change the method. Sometimes God will change the timing. That is not to your destruction. That is so that your enemy will be destroyed. We just have to learn to work with God. We just have to learn to adapt to God's plan for our life. Wait. Wait for a different method and wait for a different time. And God said to David, don't go up now. But all get ready and wait in a certain place. There are mulberry bushes above you. On top of the mulberry bushes. You will hear the sound of a going. 
When you hear that sound, start. Get yourself passionate. Have a revival. Bister means get revived. And go. Because when you hear that sound about the mulberry bushes, one thing you should understand, your God is going before you. <laughs> David, David, David. I love David. He obeys God. He obeys God. He told the army, get ready. Why? We are going for waiting. For waiting, why to put on armory? Armory le waiting. Now that is difficult. I'm telling you brothers and sisters, that is difficult. Waiting in uh, pyjama is okay. But waiting in war suit is very difficult. Are you all getting what I'm saying? Waiting period with one pizza in the hand, with one, you know, lemonade in the hand, with some TV channels going on or mobile in the hand, waiting is okay. But waiting fully loaded and locked and ready is very difficult. Because in, in that, you can't be waiting. Idling your engine is different from accelerating your engine. In that accelerated condition, waiting is very difficult. God said in that condition, you, this is the lesson believers must learn. In your high pitch faith, learn patience. No amen. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> in your high pitch faith, <laughs> learn patience. Because if you don't, Abraham will tell you, you are not birthing Isaac, you are birthing Ishmael. In your high pitch faith, don't develop Ishmael's because in future they will fight your Isaacs. He waited. He said, I'll overcome by the spirit. In that full gear, he waited before God. How long to wait, Pastor, till the sound? God said, keep listening to the sound above the mulberry bushes. In other words, don't keep listening to local commentators. Because they'll be saying, hey, Philistines are coming closer, closer, closer. Now, do something fast. They're coming close. Oh, king, do something fast. Oh, king, oh, that Goliath's other brother has come. Oh, king, old stone is there. God said, don't listen to anything but the voice above. Then you bister yourself. Why till then you shouldn't bister yourself? Why till then you shouldn't get revived? Because all the other voices will try to revive you into the direction they want to take you. But you wait. Sometimes you have to be so careful that your ears are tuned to the voice of heaven and nobody else should take that place in your life. Sometimes you wait with your ears open. Sometimes you wait with your eyes open. You look for your timing. You listen to your timing because you want to be led by the Holy Spirit. He waited at the right time. He heard the sound of, if God said he's coming, he is coming. Wow. He heard the sound. David got up. Everyone, till then they were all sitting, waiting. They all got up. Philistines are wondering when these fellows will come. <laughs> Pastor, can you find out what time of the day it was when David heard the sound so we'll know the muhurtam? <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe they were waiting for some planets to line up. <laughs> we don't wait for planets to line up. We line the planets up in prayer. You walk by faith, man. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. In the book of Job, it is our heavenly father who controls the influences of the Orion and the Pleiades. It is our God who created everything. And he is your heavenly father. And that day in that battle, when they heard the sound of a going above the mulberry bushes, oh my goodness, David and the gang got up. It was like a cakewalk for them. They had such a victory, Philistines never came back. Sometimes you fight the devil, he'll come back. And when he comes back, he'll come back with full relations. Earlier you fought one devil, now full combo has come back. <laughs> full package has come. But sometimes God will give you such a victory, full package will be wiped out. There are times God works. 
<laughs> we are going to pray and say, God, I want to be led by your Holy Spirit. Let's close our eyes and say, Father, I want to be an overcomer by your Holy Spirit. I thank you that sometimes I'll have to climb those mountains, but sometimes I'll move those mountains. Sometimes I'll grow so large that mountain will look like a small plain. I thank you, Lord, that I can do all things through Christ by your Holy Spirit that strengthens me. I thank you that whether it's up or down, whether it's less or more, I thank you that I'll be a learner. I'll be a learner. I learn your will. And by your grace, my productivity won't come down. My success won't come down. Deep inside, I'll still be the same, happy. My external will not change my internal. Hallelujah. And like David, oh, give me the grace to seek you in every battle. If there is an opportunity to avoid war, I'll ask you, Lord, should I avoid it? Unless the enemy engage with me, I don't want to engage with the enemy without your permission. Unless it's a situation where I have to respond, I will not respond without asking you. And if it is a situation where I have to respond, I will seek you in the responding. Lead me by your Holy Spirit. Let not my faith be used by my flesh, by my carnality. Let not my faith be used by my anger. Let not my faith be used by my passions. Let not my faith be used by my greed, but let my faith be used by your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit control my faith so that my prayers are acceptable in your sight. Let me overcome by your spirit, to overcome by your love, to overcome joyfully. And today, Lord, we ask that we will overcome by your Holy Spirit. We love you today. We worship you today. We thank you that you have chosen us to be your very own children. We love you, Father. Any of us here today, you want to make a commitment before God saying, Father, please, I want to be led by your spirit in areas of my life where I may have goofed up in the past, messed it up. Maybe even the foundations are pulled out like Zerubbabel faced. Thank you that by your grace, by the guidance of your Holy Spirit, I'm going to get back to work. I know you're building my life. I know, Lord, you're building my future. You're building my life. I thank you, Master. Let's pray. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, this morning you spoke to us. We want to thank you. Now as we are going to sing, we're going to worship. May your words become strength in our body. May your words turn into an anointing on our spirit. May your word become a character in our soul. We love you, Father. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. I don't do these kind of things, but if it's all right, just look at somebody beside you and say, you are an overcomer in Jesus' name. All right, let's stand. We'll sing together. Today I picked up some melodies, all right? We'll do two, three choruses together. <clears throat> it's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit, said the Lord. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit. Let's do it again. It's not. It's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit. Let's do it again, everyone. It's not by my, it's not by power. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. Every mountain shall be removed. Every mountain shall be removed. Every mountain shall be removed by my spirit. 
setting me free. He's setting me free. This Holy Ghost power. He's setting me free. This very hour. He's setting my soul free. He's making me whole. He's setting me free. Free, free. This. Shall we sing it again? He's setting me free. This Holy Ghost power. He's setting me free. This very hour. He's setting my soul free. He's making me whole. He's setting me free. This Holy Ghost. We're going to sing the last one. I just keep trusting my Lord because He's going to take me long. Amen. I just keep trusting in my Lord as I walk along. I just keep trusting in my Lord and He gives me a song. Though the storm clouds darken the sky, Oh, the heavenly train, I just keep trusting He will never fail. He's a faithful friend, such a faithful friend. I can count on Him to the very end. Though the storm clouds darken the sky, Oh, the heavenly trail, I just keep trusting He will never fail. I just keep trusting my Lord on the narrow way. I just keep trusting my Lord as He leads each day. Though the road is weary at times, Sad and blue, I just keep. Come on, church, let's clap our hands as we sing. Let's do it together. He's a faithful friend. Oh, yes, such a faithful friend. I can count on him to the very end. Though the storm clouds darken the sky. Oh, the heavenly train, I just keep trusting my Lord, He will never. Go ahead, take a few minutes to express your love, express your worship, express your praise. Hallelujah. Come on, church, open your mouth. Let the Holy Spirit anoint you with new tongues with new words of praises to God that the Holy Spirit will fill our lives with the new power of His presence. Open your mouth and pray for some time. Lift up your voice and praise Him for some time. Ramal khashi kiri ala ramariyanta, rantu ramala basi kara bala bariyanta. Oh, ramala khashi kara bala bariyanta. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. The anointing of overcoming, the anointing of overcoming, the anointing of overcoming, the anointing of overcoming. In the name of Jesus, the anointing of overcoming. Fill every life. Fill every heart, fill every individual by the power of the Holy Spirit right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for your touch. Amen, amen. We're going to confess it by faith. He's a faithful friend, such a faithful friend. I can count on him. To the very end. I promise you one thing. That storm will pass away. And when they look for you. They will find you flying above the storm. By the grace of God. Amen. Oh. 
He's a faithful friend Such a faithful friend I can count on him To the very end Though the storm clouds Before we sing that, I forgot to say something. Forgive me, okay? God forgives me, you also forgive me, okay? I forgot to say something important. Our chapel prayer, okay, all the prayer groups came in the past and one year, we had a, almost one year, I think, we had a powerful prayer time and uh, we are praying especially for the church construction. From this week, all of you who can come, start coming, okay? Wednesday, at uh, 7 o'clock. Every Wednesday at 7 o'clock, beat the devil, beat the traffic, be there. Okay? And we'll pray together. Amen? Okay, let's sing it again. He is a faithful friend. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for your word that came alive into our lives. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by your Holy Spirit that we lean on to you, we depend on you, we trust you, Holy Spirit, and our confidence is in you alone, O God, that you will make a way where there seems to be no way, that you will lead us forward, O God, in victories. Lord, we thank you for your word once again. Lord, we especially pray for those who are celebrating their birthdays and marriage anniversaries this week. We pray for your blessings upon their life. Thank you for adding it another year into their life, O God. Father, we pray for those who are traveling this week. Your journey mercies will go with them. We pray for those who have come to the church for the very first time. Their life will never be the same again. Your touch, your presence will fill their life, O oh God. Father, we pray for the tithes and the offering that you will bless the hands that are stretching towards your kingdom, O oh God. The favor of God will fill each one of our life. We thank you that your hand is leading us forward. This week is going to be blessed because your presence is continuing to fill our lives, O oh God. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now may the grace of Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide upon each one of us from now and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 We're going to take this time to welcome all those who are here for the very first time. Church, why don't we welcome them, all those who are here for the first time. All those who have come for the first time, as you go out, the, you please move into the guest lounge. There's a team waiting to meet with you and talk to you. And if some of you, if you need prayer, the pastors are here in the front, as well as in the overflow for prayer. God bless you. Have a wonderful week ahead. Bye-bye.